Do we begin ako ng prayer? Good afternoon, good morning, good day sa lahat ng ating mga kasambuhay, mga taga-subaybay ng ating uh, pangalawang episode ng ating um, webinar. Um, kaya medyo natagalan kami, meron pang nais sa uh, kailangang ayusin dahil nga ay pangalawa pa lang episode na ito. Uh, nevertheless, at sabi ng iba, napakaganda yung ating tatalakay ngayon. At uh, tayo ay uh, nakabroadcast all over the world. At uh, marahil sa ibang bansa ay umaga ngayon, madaling araw, gabi, ng ating mga uh, kasambuhay. Dahil ito rin ay delayed nga lang na telecast, mamaya i-upload doon sa ating uh, kasambuhay uh, TV channel sa YouTube. At uh, bago tayo magsimula, siguro, with a short prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Loving Father, we thank you for the, this beautiful day that amid this pandemic, you have truly loved us, and you have not abandoned us. Bless us as we reflect on the value of suffering. And how can we turn it into an offering in solidarity with your own sacrifice in Calvary? That our own pains, anxieties, or sacrifices today may have some sense of purpose. And that through this reflection, may we have the power as well as the strength to be able to overcome our own trials and difficulties in life, especially in this moment of COVID-19 pandemic. That soon we trust this will all come to pass. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, we will go directly to our Slide. Bakit nakita na agad dito? Ayan. Yun. Nakapasok agad sa second uh, slide. So, the topic that was given me is about hope amid suffering according to St. Paul. Now, for us as the Society of St. Paul, lalong-lalong sa foreign family, uh, si St. Paul, of course, is our patron. He is considered as our founder by our uh, founder, Blessed James Alderione. Si St. Paul, ang aming uh, inspiration. At um, ipinagdiwang namin yung aming uh, kapitahan noong uh, June 30. So June 29 was actually the feast of St. Peter and Paul, the two pillars of Christianity. Pero para sa Pauline world, on June 30, we were given a special indulgence by uh, the Vatican, by the Church, to celebrate it as the feast of St. Paul. Kaya mainit pa yung ating uh, pagdiriwan ng kapitahan ni St. Paul. And uh, needless to say, yung ating topic na yun, I think that does not need any more introduction. Dahil we know that uh, all of us are uh, undergoing trials and difficulties. Lahat tayo ay naapektuhan ng uh, pandemya nito. We are all suffering in one way or another. And even according to that recent survey, there are seven out of eight Filipinos who have um, mental illness or stress. Lahat tayo ay na stress Pati ako ay nag-stress din. Kaya nabawasan daw ako ng uh, 8 kilos 
Pero mukhang hindi naman yata nakikita dito sa ating na screen. Nabawasan ako. Mukhang nagdagdagan pa. But seriously, yun nga, isa siguro yun sa kadahilanan kung bakit ako ay uh, nabawasan ng timbang ay yung stress. At um, this particular topic would uh, help us understand that despite our experience of pain and suffering, there is some sense of purpose in all of this. At yan ang ating tatalakayin by reflecting on not just the writings of St. Paul, but even his own life. Kaya nga, ano ba ang uh, pinanghawakan ni St. Paul? Unang-una, of course, we need to have a hope and uh, according to some hope, it's actually an acronym which means have only positive expectation. So, ibig sabihin, we have to be positive in our life, especially at this uh, moment of pandemic. But I would like to qualify that. Not just positive, positive expectations. We cannot be positive all the time. But it must be assumed the fact that yes, we have to be positive even amid suffering in this world because suffering is inevitable. It is inescapable. Hindi natin mayiluwasan yan. So let us be positive even with the presence of pain, anxiety, and suffering in this world. So to begin with, let us understand who is St. Paul. Ano ang kanyang inner physiognomy? Ano yung kanyang inner character? And this one is the foundation of St. Paul. Ito yung kanyang anchor. Ito yung kanyang hugot. Ito yung kanyang pinahugutan ng lakas. From Galatians 2.20, he said, I live no longer I, but Christ lives in me. In so far as I, I, live, I now live in my flesh, in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who has loved me and given himself up for me. So take note. This is about Christification. St. Paul is uh, fully convinced that Christ has loved him. And that because Christ has loved him, ultimately he has to be like Christ. We have to be conformed to Christ in body and soul, even to the point of death. Because we know that we will also table the glory of Jesus' resurrection. So, napaka-importante nito. Dahil dito natin makikita kung bakit si St. Paul ay uh, parang napakatapang. Endured. Later on, we're going to see that. Endured all kinds of persecutions, of trials, and difficulties. Saan ba nagagaling yun yung kanyang lakas at yung kanyang endurance? It is from this pronouncement of St. Paul. From Galatians 2. All that Paul does starts from this center. His faith is the experience of being loved by Jesus in a totally personal way. Personal way. That is crucial. It is awareness of the fact that Christ faith death not for something anonymous, but for love of him, of Paul. And that reason Christ still loves him has given himself for him. So Paul does not only declare that he is loved by God, that all of us, in fact, are saved by Christ, but he felt it personally. Remember the encounter of Paul, the way to Damascus, where he had encounter with the living Christ? That was the start of his 180 turn around. It was an illumination. His conversion was an illumination. Not because he was a great sinner. Yes, he was a zealous persecutor of Krishna eventually becoming an ardent apostle of the church. But he was not, not a bad person. He believed at the time that what he was doing was good. That the sect of the Nazarene was something that is peste, uh, like a cancer in the Jewish faith. But when he encountered the risen Christ on the way to Damascus, he had a personal encounter with Christ. Personal. That is crucial personal that Christ loves each 
one of us, you and me. And that is what faith for sinful is. It is the love of Christ. The love of Christ. And because of that, sinful was courageous in proclaiming the gospel. Woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. So this love of Jesus to each one of us, to St. Paul, must have an impact in our everyday life. Because this is something that will carry us through in our everyday life. The love of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the introduction, I said, no one can escape from suffering. And this is also the realization of St. Paul. That suffering is an inescapable reality. It is inevitable. We can't, we can't do anything about it. Pain is inevitable. But to be miserable is actually a choice. So how did St. Paul approach this particular reality? For Paul, the cross of Jesus Christ is at the center of all that he does. He teaches us how to deal with the hardships and the grief of life. Paul experienced it all. In other words, Paul was not just talking about the story of another person. He's not talking about something out of the blue. O pwede man natin sabihin na if I'm given a choice whether the relief of my pain and compensation for my pain can that happen? We cannot escape from pain. We can have some form of relief from pain, but not totally. We cannot even have compensation for pain. We try to avoid it. We try to take uh, medication, take believers. And then, iba, we try to compensate. Hindi talaga nababayaran. Natutubutan yung ating pain and sacrifices and suffering in life. And St. Paul is one authority to talk about Suffering. The first, it is an inescapable reality. He himself endured it. He himself experienced it. So from 2 Corinthians 11, I am still more with far great rewards, far more imprisonment. He was uh, beaten. He had brought with death. He was uh, endured 40 lashes minus one, three times. He was beaten with drugs. He was stoned. He was three times, night and day. He had not sleep. The not is the same for is somebody who is who will try to support himself. Cold night, frequent fasting. As the same for is somebody whom we can say is an Magalgani once said this, if you really want to love, first learn to suffer because suffering teaches you to love. And this is the whole order. If you want to truly love, then the prerequisite is learn to suffer. For how can you truly love if you do not appreciate suffering? Or you are not able to turn suffering into an inspiration, into something useful, into something meaningful, into something redemptive, into something transformative. So, St. Paul endured all these things. And he is truly an authority to talk about suffering. And the second is that for him, suffering is an inescapable reality because of the entry of sin. 
Kaya no, tayo may problema, may mga rejections, may mga trials, may kamatayan, which is the third to death. These are self-evident realities brought about by sin. We live in a fallen world. No? So yan, lagi natin tadaan. We live in a fallen world, not in a perfect world. Remember the creation story. Kung sana hindi nagkasala yung ating unang mga magulang, ayun, nag-enjoy tayo ngayon sa paraiso. But we were exiled from paradise. And so this would answer the perennial question. Lagi natin, yeah, ito, lalo na sa panahon natin ngayon, tinatanong natin, am I being punished by God? Is God punishing me? Why, Lord? Sa ginagandami natin mga problema, economic problem, financial problem, emotional, physical, yung mga stress. Bakit nangyayari? Halos sabay-sabay ang mga bagay nito. Well, maybe God is telling us something. But is this something that is caused by God? Tayo ba'y tinaparutahan ng Diyos? Far from it. 2 Corinthians 4, ito yung version is equal. Of course, you can find it also in John 3.16. 3.16. For God to love the world that He gave His only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through Him. Malinaw yan. Maliwanan. Hindi ginusto ng Diyos at hindi gugusto ng Diyos na tayo ay parusahan. He is the God of love. In fact, the reason that He was here to die for us, He was incarnated to His passion, death, and resurrection in order to restore us to our original relationship with the Father that we can come back to our original homeland kung saan tayo nanggaling sa paraiso ng Eden. Yun nga lang, nandito pa tayo na hitibakas sa mundong ito. No? So, these are the basic foundation. Ito yung siguro yung mga uh, introductions uh, bago natin tuluyan sa kalakayan ng suffering. We can escape it. Pain is inevitable. Suffering is an inescapable reality. So long as we live in this world, we are alive and seeking, there will always be suffering because we are not in a perfect world. We do not live in a perfect world. That is the reality. Now, amidst this reality, Paul was willing to suffer. He was willing to suffer. We were shared and we heard about how he endured all kinds of trials and tribulations that came his way. And why was Paul willing to suffer? Number one, because he considered suffering as a badge of his love, badge of his love for the truth of the gospel. Badge of his love. Remember, take note again, we go back to the foundation. Because God has loved him personally. Not just the salvation of humanity, but personally. Each one of us. Bawat sa atin. And so it is a badge of his love. To be able to reciprocate that same love for Jesus Himself, who has died for us, who has loved us immensely. And in 1 Corinthians 4, to so this very hour we go hungry and thirsty, we are poorly clad and roughly treated, we wander about homeless and defiled, working with our hands, when ridiculed, we bless, when persecuted, we endure, when slandered, we respond gently, lahat na ng klase kung paano mo maging isang mabuting kristyano sa kabila no, ng pinyaki, persecutions. Ito, to become like the world's rubbish that's come of all to this very moment. Sabi ng isang pari namin, Father Domi, sabi niya, kahit paman ito ay parang itinuturin ng isang basura. Na isa ay sila yata, yung nangangamoy tayo na. Alang-alang at at para kay Kristo, gagawin mo dahil sa pagmamahal mo sa Diyos. The bad to this love for the truth of the gospel. Both to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. That is why St. Paul is credited for the expansion of the church. You know, I can write in 13 letters. 7 canonical, 6 deuterocanonical, 
Zotero, which means attributed to him, though he may not have directly written these letters. Shall nevertheless with three missionary journeys covering 35,000 miles and layo and lawak on the Sinak of Miss Import. Just imagine journeying sa panahon na noon kung saan hindi pa ganun kaganda ang uh, transportation it was an immense sacrifice on the part of St. Paul. In 2 Corinthians, he also narrated the same encounters of hardship and difficulty because we are ministers of God. It, it is expected of us to undergo an encounter endurance in affliction, hardships, constraints, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, details, past. Siguro kung may hukumpala natin yung ating uh, mga sakripisyo, mga pinati, ating mga suffering sa mundong ito, ay napakalayo kung pala kay St. Paul. Pangalawa, for St. Paul, Suffering is a way of caring about in the body the dying of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our body. And what is that? It is offering. Being in solidarity with Jesus. The dying of Jesus in Calvary. That we may feel when they experience it ourselves. Kaya ulit sa 2 Corinthians 4, sabi ni St. Paul, we are afflicted in every way, but not constrained, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. Always caring about in the body the dying of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our body. For we who live are constantly being given up to death for the sake of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh. We've heard beautiful stories about tayo in quarantine, historia, noong mga na hospital, na infect, and there were beautiful stories about how they surrendered to God. They resigned their faith to God. How they just offered everything to God. And lo and behold, it was through our prayers, it was through their own designation to God's will that prompted and enacted through healing in their life, and they were able to recover. Meron pa ng tasibuga yon, yung uh, isang bata na no, niwalay sa kanyang pamilya dahil siya nga ay na isolate, dahil siya ay COVID. At naging viral yun. Kung saan siya ay umaawit, kumakanta ng mga papuli sa Diyos. Tuwing gabi, part of this night for you. At makikita natin doon sa kanyang uh, uh, komposisyon, kanyang pangangatawan, na siya ay gumaling. So in other words, King Paul, by understanding suffering, with suffering as a way of being in solidarity with the dying Jesus in Calvary. To make it useful, to make it something that is redemptive. Number three, St. Paul was willing to suffer because he sees the value and the virtue of offered, offered suffering. As a filling up in my stress, what is lacking the afflictions of the church on behalf of its body, which is the church. And in 1 Colossians 1, we have the same Paul, Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ on behalf of its body, which is the church. Now, the few words here are offered suffering. Offered. Suffering. But in contrast to the first one, caring about in the body the dying of Jesus, this means it's more personal. Para sa atin, teaching us, teaching us, 
This is how you're supposed to carry your organ of suffering. This one, offered suffering, points to a particular beneficiary. Merong direksyon, merong patutunguhan. And what I mean is that, yes, you suffer, and when you suffer willingly, it is meant for somebody else. It is a suffering for the sake of others. It is a suffering with a sense of purpose. Kaya nga, let your suffering be your offering. Naalaala ko yung sarili kong kapatid, the youngest in our family, the only uh, daughter. She died at a young age of 37. A press press few years ago pa lang. And uh, when she was in her deathbed, I was telling her, let your suffering be your offering. If you would not, tatanong-tanong siya. Habang nakikita mo yung kanyang own struggle, that was started from breast cancer, nagiging lung cancer, nagiging uh, brain cancer, ang dami, lima yata, liver, bone, Lahat na yata, nandun sa kanya. But uh, she would not, whenever I would recite it, like a mantra, let your offering be, let your suffering be your offering to the Lord. And what makes it truly meaningful is that you are not just suffering for yourself, but sinanggap mo ang yung uh, pagdurusa, kundi Hindi mo lang tinanggap ang iyong mga suffering, your own sacrifices, your pain, but you're doing it for the sake of somebody else. Kaya lagi natin pinagdarasal yung ating simbahan for the intentions of the sanctification of the church. The church being composed of both saints and sinners. The mystical body of Christ. Kailangan natin yun. For the Pope, for the bishops, for the priests, for all the faithful. If you really want to make your suffering truly meaningful, offer it for somebody, for the conversion of the black sheep in the family, for a particular intention of the healing of a member of the family, for reconciliation, for unity in the family. Marami. And uh, for me, this is truly important. St. Paul has offered his own suffering for what is lacking in the church. Not because Christ's suffering on Calvary was one thing, was incomplete, beyond, completo ang sacrificial and God. But it is in our end, in our part. To be in solidarity with Christ's suffering, our intention, our willingness to suffer. in order to be united with the whole body of Christ. Pangapat, Paul was willing to suffer because for him, kanina, badge of love, badge of love, ngayon naman, it is a badge of honor. For St. Paul, he was willing to suffer because he preached suffering as a badge of honor, a necessary step towards solidarity with Christ, an indication that a person has already some degree of union with Him. Kaya sabi niya sa Galatians 6, Henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear on my body the mark of Christ. Of course, yung ating uh, mga favorite things like uh, St. Francis, of Assisi, Padre Pio, the most stigmatic. Both of them carried the wounds of Christ in their body. Even saying for he boasted about his suffering. Isang sinabi niya, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Gayahin niyo ako. Hindi dahil ako yung nagmamalaki na magaling ako, kundi dahil sa aking pagmamahal sa Diyos. Marahil ito yung magandang halimbawa si Hemplo para sa inyo. And exactly this is what St. Paul is teaching us about suffering. Yes, he has so much teaches about suffering. 
that simply because he endured all of this, he had been through a lot, that he is an authority, may karapatan siyang magsalita. Kasi hindi naman pwedeng sabihin, may sindihan si I understand you. Pero, baka isagot sa'yo nung uh, namatayan, na, namatayan ka na ba ng anak, nagkagento ka na ba, nasinugang ka na ba, e kung wala ka naman ganun karanasan, manihin ka na lang. How can you empathize with the person if you have not been through that kind of trial yourself? Then the same Paul, he has the authority. He is credible. No? May karapatan na sabihin at magpaliwanag sa tungkol dito sa suffering. So it is a badge of honor. And for me, that is maybe the ultimate. St. Francis, yung kanyang uh, um, wounds, the wounds of Christ that he endured came out towards the last part of his life. And for me, for him, it could be his crown glory. It's painful, katulad kay Padre Pio, but for them, it was an honor, truly an honor, to be able to to have similar things and sacrifices as that of our Lord in Calvary. So, marahil yung ating mga sariling pagdurusa, yung ating mga pain and anxiety in life, may not be would fail in comparison to that of the Lord. But, at least we get the essence of how we can truly make our own sacrifices and pain meaningful. And for same for, that's just the key. We really endure all this stuff and but there was something that he was looking forward to. That this sacrifices, this pain, this suffering are worth doing it, worth enduring. Why? Because the best is yet to come. There is something that awaits us in the end. That it will come to pass. Kahit pa mga pandemya nito, kahit sinasabi ng mga eksperto that uh, we are going to live with this virus for the next two to three years, and that we can never go back to what it was before. It will be a new normal. No, hindi na tayo magiging touchy ngayon, magiging clingy, etc. But same Paul is telling us, is teaching us, look beyond. Look beyond. Understand the last reality. We are just what students in this world. Ay lamang ang nagdalak ba sa mundong ito. We live in a fallen world. And it is expected that nothing is perfect. Alam na natin yan, yung mga kwento, mahirap, mapayaman. You can never be fully happy in this life. And it is by awaiting that joyful moment to be with the Father in heaven. Sabi ng St. Augustine, we only have one point of destination and that is heaven, one point of departure, and that is sin. We are just a children in this world. We live in a body time. Ano lang ba? Gaano lang ba kahaba yung ating buhay, ang ating lifetime? Si Lupay, para sa ating mga Pilipino. Lalo, lalo ngayon, with this uh, pandemic, COVID-19, is telling us that, wow, death is really so real. So we are so afraid because death is an equalizer. It does not discriminate. Walang mahirap, walang mayaman dito. Death is no respecter of position, of power, or title, or what have you. And worse, it's not just we are afraid of this virus or that we are going to die, but the idea of dying alone hurts us. Yung ikaw yung magbawa tayo na nag-iisa. Hindi ka mabibisita ng pare at na mabigyan ng last right. Hindi ka nabibisita ng iyong mga mahal sa buhay in order to console you, in order to cheer you up. They are considered lucky if um, you're able to say goodbye using technology. Like for example, uh, FaceTime or uh, video call. For me, it's really not the best time to die now. Kung mamatay man lang tayo, siguro, yun naman sana ng eh, papaano eh. Makapagpaalam ka mabuti, ng maayos. 
that there will be closure in your life. Ito hindi. I think it's the loneliest way to die. It's not the best time to die. So just like the transfiguration of the Lord, no? that vision in uh, Mount Tabor, we look forward, we are given a glimpse of the pledge of the future glory, of heavenly reward, so long as we persevere. So, sabi ni St. Paul, do not lose, lose heart. Though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed every day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all compassion. So there will come a time when we are on the verge of giving up. But with this, heaven is even something to be desired. Kaya nga, sabi ni St. Bernadette, Tuguru, yung visionary ng um, Our Lady of Lourdes, sabi niya, why must we suffer? Because here below, your love cannot exist without suffering. Yan din ang sinabi kanina. Suffering is a prerequisite of loving. And so, it is something that we cannot escape from. It is inevitable. And, as I've said earlier, we live in a borrowed time. We are just the pilgrims in this world. Tempus in parallel pushy, time flies never to return. We are conditioned by time, whether we like it or not. And this suffering is extended in time. Yes, it will come to an end, but it will have its time. Sabi nga, eh, itong ang pandemya ito, two to three years, bago talaga tayo ay mag-vaccinate, magkaroon tayo ng uh, luna. And so we have to contend with it. What this means is that Christ's suffering, His passion, are extended in time until the end of the world. Kung ito man ay sumabay, doon sa katapusan ng mundo, we do not know. But that is one important reality that we have to understand. Hindi yan nare-relieve. Hindi yan napapompensate. Hindi yan natutumbasan, nababayaran. Yung nga na nakakalungkot. Because of this, we're trying to find ways in order to escape some pain. We run away from it. Nakakalungkot na ang mga bagay na ito inariyan pa rin. Hindi basta-basta natatapos. Hindi basta-basta napuputol. And that is one thing that we have to understand. That is why St. Paul is teaching us how we are supposed to turn desperation into an inspiration. To make our suffering truly meaningful, redemptive, transformative. And something that will lead us towards the eternal glory in heaven. That is why we have to face our suffering with courage. Courage. And St. Paul said, said his faith is founded on that love of Christ. Huwag natin kalimutan yon. Ang pagmamahal ng Diyos sa bawat isa sa atin. This suffering will continue. It will be like a pledge of future glory as long as this world lasts. And yet, paradoxically, when the Christian suffers for Christ and the church, he or she can actually, she actually experiences a deep happiness. How is that possible? Na ikaw na yung nagdurusa na, naghihirap na, natutuwa ka pa. It's something to look forward to. Not because you just want to escape from it, but because you know that the best is just to come. There is the good thing that will await you in the end. Let me share with you this uh, story from a 
14th century biography of St. Francis. One night, when he was thinking about all the trials he was enduring, he felt sorry for himself and said sincerely, Lord, help me in my infirmities so that I can have the strength to bear them patiently. And suddenly in his mind, he heard a voice. Tell me, brother, if you were to be given a great and precious treasure in return for your sufferings and trials, would you not rejoice? Be joyful and happy in the needs of your infirmities and trials. For from now on, life in as much as peace as if you were already sharing my kingdom. Kung katulad ng tayo St. Francis, looking forward to that heavenly reward, his pain would be readily appreciated. But human beings, as we are, it's truly difficult. But it is not impossible. Say, for example, the case of Sister Cecilia Maria, a Carmelite nun, OCD, from Santa Fe, Argentina, who was suffering of a painful lung cancer. I think you've come across this on uh, Facebook, kasi naging viral din ito. And uh, look, this picture, with a uh, tapio on her neck. That was the last moment picture immediately after she died and she was smiling even when she was still alive enduring all this kind of pain she was smiling and she wrote that before she died Sabina, I was thinking about how I would like my funeral to be first some intense prayer and then a great celebration for everyone don't forget to pray but don't forget to celebrate either why because for her, her death marked the entrance to heaven. That finally it has come to pass. After enduring all her pain, making some sense and meaning with her pain and suffering and sacrifices in life. So Sana, when that moment comes, we'll be able to also smile and welcome it fully the curse of death, knowing that through Jesus' passion, death, and resurrection, death is not the end of everything, but the beginning of a life that never ends. You know, I also have some personal experiences with this. When I was a, uh, a volunteer chaplain in Makatemek for five years, in panahon na yon, it was uh, 2008, 2010, 2012, I think, naabutan ko yung heart. But there, there were no cases, I think, in uh, Makati Medjur during that time. But as the chaplain, as the priest, of course, you will be there, there on the deathbed of the person. You give the last rites, and you've seen the various faces of death. Merong iba parang natutulog lang. Merong iba parang uh, ramdam pa yung sakit at sabi doon sa kanilang mukha. Merong iba parang siyak na siyak, nagugulat pa. Nakabuka pa yung mata, kailangan pang isara. Pero merong iba parang... Yun na, napaganda, parang natutulog lang. Parang tumatawid lang sa kabilang buhay. Nakangiti. At peace. Kaya nauli din natin, no? sa panahon na ito, pagka hindi ka rin nabigyan ng last rites ng pare, parang mas nalalang nakakatakot pa. It's not just the fear of dying alone, the contrast, but uh, not being given the last rites, the sacraments, communion, etc. Parang tuloy, dumudoble, nervyos natin, natakot. So it is possible that even as we encounter and we endure all kinds of pain, the most painful in fact, we can still smile, just like Sister Cecilia. But, not all in life is pain. Ito yung pambawi ni St. Paul, not all in life is pain. But it's Christ's assurance. And this is our hope and consolation. This is my favorite text, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Amidst trials and sufferings, Paul consoles us 
No trial has come to you, but what is human? God is faithful and will not let you be tried beyond your strength. But with the trial, he will also provide a way out so that you may be able to bear it. Namnamin natin yan, yung text na ito. Napaka-importante. Ano bang ibig sabihin ito? Alam ng Diyos kung ano yung hangganan. Alam ng Diyos kung ano yung saturation point. Kung hanggang dito ka na, malulunod ka na. Hindi ka lulunodin ng Diyos. Hindi ka mamamatay. God is telling us, if you are at the point, I am. I will all the more empower you to give you strength to be able to overcome them, to provide you a way out. In other words, he is telling us, and the same Paul is teaching us, that yes, this suffering or pain is an opportunity not just to be able to share in the suffering of Christ in Calvary, but in order to sanctify ourselves. Again, our suffering is our offering. And not just to sanctify ourselves, but also to pray for others. That our own sacrifices and pain will become an offering for the sake of others, for their conversion, for their healing, for the sanctification of the church, for reconciliation among warring persons and partners. Kaya na yan sabi rin ng Panginoon, if the world hates you, realize that it hated you first. If you belong to the world, the world would love its own, but because you do not belong to the world, and have chosen you out of the world, the world hates you. That this is the kind of the world that we live in. It's a fallen world. That is why pain is inescapable. It is inevitable. You cannot escape from it. You cannot run around from it. At the same genre na nagsabi ng ganyan, we live in this world, but we are not of this world. This is not our home. The world is not our home. This is just being given to us in order to take care of it as responsible stewards. Again, from Romans 8, sino bang makapaghihiwalay sa atin sa pag-ibig ni Cristo? What then shall we have to say to this? If God is for us, who can be against? We just have to trust that whenever the trials come along our way, they are meant for something. Truly, nothing happens by accident. However, there might come a time when we really do not fully, fully understand what is going on with our life. But we pray for the wisdom to understand this thing. That it has a sense of purpose. So amidst all these things, hirap na hirap ka na. Ang dami mong mga pagsubok sa buhay. Again, going back just like St. Paul, ano ba ang kanyang pinahugutan? Ano ba ang kanyang uh, naging pundasyon, pinahugutan ng lahat? God's love for us. That is what faith for St. Paul is. God's love. Yun ang pinanggalingan ng lahat. At yung ang dahilan kung bakit ang lahat ay kanyang nalagpasan sa pagtagumpayan. Because God truly loves Painful. And experience that love personally is not something anonymous, it's personal. And it should be also for us. Naramdam natin ang pag-ibig ng Diyos. Kaya siguro tayo ay naghahanap na iba pang mga instant gratification. We look for medicine or technology to distract us. Ganun tayo, we are fascinated with momentary happiness. Or they can the worst kind, the opposite side. Three side, escapism, euthanasia. We take it upon ourselves. Nasa ating kamay na. Even if we are not the owner of life. Dahil ang kapatid natin, nasa ating yung ating kaligayahan. Nasa ating choice. But if you feel God's love, you would realize that yes, even if it will lead us to death, we know that death is not the end of everything, but the beginning of a life that never ends with Christ. It is the 
a necessary door to bring to pass in order to fully encounter the Lord because the best is to come. God's love and Christ's love are poured into us by the Holy Spirit. God's love has been poured into our hearts to the Holy Spirit who has been given to us and the Christian has a duty to respond. So, baka yung iba magtatanong sa atin, paano ko marunan ang pag-ibig ng Diyos? Ang sakit-sakit na nga. We just have to rediscover the power of the Spirit. Isa ni iba sa atin, yun, nakakalimutan natin yung paggalaw ng Spirit sa ating buhay. Kailan natin, naramdaman na natin ang Spirit nung tayo nag-attend ng Life in the Spirit Seminar. But in fact, from the very beginning, when we were baptized, we received the Spirit. It was reinforced when we were confirmed. And every day of our life, the Spirit is there for us. We are given it, the fruit of the Spirit. And so those are the ways. We have been equipped, fully equipped. Those are the ways to be able to feel God's love through the Spirit, the life-giving Spirit, our advocate, our protector. And we have the Christian duty to respond. Even with suffering, it is a way of responding to God's love. So in the last analysis, it is our love of God that keeps us true to the demands of the faith, no matter what difficulties we come up against. All the other virtues and charisms are secondary to charity. Ayan, famous ito from the treaties of St. Paul in love. 1 Corinthians 13. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am noisy gong or flying symbol. And then towards the end, if I gave all I have, and if I deliver my body to be nothing, to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. In the end, the treating the plus, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of this is Love. So note that when we started the reflection of Paul and the Bible kanyang angkor, yung kanyang foundation, it is the love of God for him. And in the same way, by being conformed to Christ, by being like Christ, then what should lead us towards the end is also God's love for us and our love for God. Again, Romans 8. You might want to reflect on it also in your personal study and reflection. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Now, as a sort of a uh, postscript, not a bend. This cross, the symbolism of the cross, that cross has two plans an upright and horizontal. The upright one leads us to God, unites us to God, and the horizontal unites us to all other men and women, beginning with those who share the faith. As I've been saying from Galatians 6, so then as we have opportunity, let us do good to all men and all, and especially to those who are of the household of the faith. So what does this mean? As we reflect on our suffering, Sabi nga ni Pope Francis, nung uh, tinanong siya ng bata, nung pagbisita niya, patungkol doon sa mga nasalanta ng Yolanda, sabi ni Saint Francis, let us look at the cross. The Christ is also there for us. He had been there. In fact. And by looking at Jesus at the cross, you know that you are not alone. Hindi ka nag-iisa. And so this cross, our own suffering, is not just something that is for ourselves. Something that's personal. We're reflected in that. It is more meaningful if it is shared and meant for others with a particular sense of purpose and direction. Something useful. So your own suffering and pain would lead you directly to Christ, but at the same time, do not forget that it must be concretized in our love and care and compassion and empathy for others. So fraternal charity is not just a matter of feeling well disposed to people. It should be something active and practical. Paul addressed the people of the Macedonian churches. On the first day of the week, it's a view is to put something aside and store it up for the widows, for the widows and all parts of Jerusalem. 
and the famous two Corinthians 9, consider that whoever sows sparingly, he also reaps sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully, he also reaps bountifully. What does this mean? Yes, our suffering leads us towards an upward direction towards God. But let us not forget, and we should not forget our relationship with others. And that is basically about good stewardship. Itong kwento ng two Corinthians, when St. Paul was with the Macedonian churches, uh, Berea, uh, Philippi, Thessalonica, the people there who had been ravaged by war, they were practically pleading to St. Paul, look, kahit pa may kami hirap, may hirap na, kami ay nagdurusa, allow us to help you, allow us to donate so that we can help the orphans and the widows of Jerusalem. Kukulang na lang, ikaw ikaw yung wala si St. Paul, allow us to help, even in their own suffering. And that is stewardship. So suffering has that sense of purpose and meaning when it is shared with others. It's not just, it's not just for yourself. But when it is meant for others. Oh, Francis, ito ay galing sa post ng ating uh, ating post online. There is no true love without the cross. That is without a personal price to pay. However, we should remember that we never care of us alone since Jesus is always there to support us in our trials to give us strength and courage. No true love without the cross. No genuine love without true sacrifice. But remember that whenever we experience this pain of forces in life, we are not alone. Hindi tayo nag Christ is there for us and He had been there. And He, in fact, He has conquered death for us. Oh, death, where is your sting? Sabi ng same point. And we are now capable of returning to our eternal homeland. I come across this meme on uh, Facebook. It's uh, truly relevant to our studies for today. Sabi dito, we have two options in life. To suffer with Christ or suffer without Him. Dalawa lang yan. If you want to put some sense and meaning in your suffering, then there is no other way but with Christ. Or if you want to be despairing. You know, you know when I was in uh, Makati Med, uh, I also had that uh, quote, quote, traumatic experience when I had some patients in the birds of death and they would say, oh, bakit ka nandito? Parang takot na takot sila na may pari doon. Mamamatay na ba ako? Of course, hindi sila nagpatawag marahil yung kapamilya. Pero even in the last moment, I'm so so discouraged, disappointed. Na even in the last moment, mamamatay ka na lang. Parang nagmumura ka pa. Galit na galit ka pa. Andyan pa yung yung angus. Andyan pa yung yung kung sino-sino ang mga sinisisi. And yeah, the guy literally with all guns blazing, ito nga. You suffer without him. I repeat, pain, suffering is inevitable. is inescapable. But misery is a choice. It becomes a choice and you become miserable if you wallow in, all, in your self -esteem. You focus in your pain and suffering with a sense of purpose and meaning. And the cost is our enemy. Our pain and sacrifices will have meaning. Our process in life will truly have meaning if we look at also the sacrifice of Christ in Calvary. The cost. And then you would realize that, yes, this pain is bearable. This pain, this sacrifice has some sense of purpose, not only for me, for my own sanctification, but also for the sake of others, for the conversion of somebody else, of a sinner, for the sanctification of the church, for the good of the mystical body of Christ, for the Pope, for the bishop, for the erring priest, 
for my family. If you see that there is some usefulness, sense of meaning, and direction in your own suffering, you will not be despairing. Because you know that it will lead to something good. Changes of the cross. And I saw the river over which every soul must pass to reach the kingdom of heaven. And the name of that river was suffering. And I saw a boat with scared souls across the river. And the name of that boat was love. Note we've uh, mentioned three things in this particular reflection. And they are all saying one thing. According to Satan of the cross, to be able to cross that uh, chasm, that river towards the other bank of the river, which would be the kingdom of God. Then you have to pass through the river of suffering. And the only way to be able to cross the river of suffering is to ride the boat that is named love. You can never love without suffering. It is a prerequisite of loving. Indeed, having God in your boat doesn't mean that you'll not face any storms. It means that no storm can sink your boat. Walk in faith, and you will never walk alone. Again, I, I repeat, we live in a fallen world. There will always be pain, there will always be suffering, there will always be, there will always be trials. Because we live in a fallen world. But this is not our homeland. Hindi tayo tiga dito sa mundo ito. Tayo namang ay naglalakbay sa mundo ito. Our true destination is in heaven. And so, even if suffering is extended in time, we are consoled by the fact that we are not alone. The Jesus joins with us. And the same for is teaching us also how we are supposed to turn something negative into truly positive, a desperation into an inspiration, to embrace your cross, to find meaning and transformation in your own life, to make your own suffering useful. Your suffering is your offering. Let me end with uh, this prayer, as also I pray for you, for all of us. Dear Lord, I know that there is no sickness that you cannot heal. You know all things. You can do all things. And I know you love me very much. We faith in your promise that whatever we ask in prayer, you will grant us if it will be good for our souls. I come before you to ask for the healing of my body, mind, emotions, and spirit. Touch me now where I am hurting most. Only you know what kind of healing I need most right now. Let the grace of your divine love flow and spread to the different parts of my body, reaching the inner recesses of my being. Let me realize the deeper meaning of my sickness and trials and lead me closer to you as I find comfort in your loving heart. Let me find joy and peace amidst my suffering and with eyes of faith see the blessing and victory that await me. And then, dear Father, after I have been healed, may be a witness of your healing power and bring glory, honor, and praise to you. This I pray in Jesus' name to Mary and all the saints. O Saint Paul, the Apostle of Satan, pray for us and the Apostolate and the means of social communication. Samuli, maraming salamat po. See you next time para sa ating third episode. At uh, sana may napulo po tayong aral at reflection na sa panahon ngayon ng pandemya, mas lalo tayong palakasin ng Panginoon, huwag mapanghinaan ng loob. Because we know that even if pain is inevitable, it is part of our life, it is inescapable, we can turn it around and make it useful. Pain is ine inevitable. Misery is a choice. If you are in suffering, but remember, embrace your cross. The cross is a remedy. It is the way to the Father. As what St. Rose of Lima said, 
apart from the cross, there is no other ladder to heaven. Pagpalain po tayong lahat. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, catch us again on another talk series on Saturday. It's uh, Saturday ulit. Meron tayo. And, uh, of course, kabilang dito, also visit our products at St. Paul's Online. Dahil na sa hirap ngayon ng uh, uh, pandemyang ito, napakahirap pumunta sa ating mga bookstores. So, sana tagsilitin dito po ang aming uh, mga produkto, ang aming apostolate. And of course, we all do this for the gospel. 